Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you, Tim. Um, I was at the Seattle conference, the Detroit conference, and delighted to be here because um, I think some of my greatest inspirations come from people in Canada and BC in particular, so it's fabulous. Uh, look, my approach today in 15 minutes, I want to build a bit on Bruce's presentation yesterday, um, and secondly, I want to highlight some key challenges coming out of that and also some um, particular unique opportunities. Uh, the NDIS is a big change in thinking, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if many of you yesterday heard Bruce's presentation and were scratching your heads about exactly what this means and how it might work. And um, I think it's what happens when you're exposed to something which is a sort of quite a big paradigm shift. So, so I did want to um, just sort of tease out a few issues and deepen that understanding. And there's also um, a session today, C6, which talks about on the ground implementation. Uh, particularly in Western Australia. So just some introductory comments. Australia is a federation, um, six states, two territories, 24 million people. We've got the very best and some of the very worst. Um, my state, uh, Western Australia, 25 years of hard work around personalisation, direct funding for people, building networks, community work, go to other parts of the country and very, very different and everything in between. So a lot of variability. You know, Bruce did say that you know, the consensus was that the system was broken in Australia, and I just want to say there's some amazing people doing amazing work. And I've worked in that system, I've seen all these people, but there's not enough money and the really good work is not scaled up enough. So I just want to acknowledge the good work and also the big question is about the getting sufficient resource into the system and really scaling up these uh, good ideas. Um, so I just want to acknowledge the amazing effort of everybody in the campaign to get the scheme up and the design of the scheme. Um, so we've now got the concept of a, a sustainable scheme in Australia, financially sustainable, if we can, um, we can pull that off. Now, it does raise a, a big question, I reckon, which is, if you could transform your country's system, what would you do? <laughs> and how long would it take? Okay, so these are pretty big questions, and I think the Australian context is a working example of we've jumped into that space and it's not perfect, but it is um, something we can all uh, learn from and we're very, very open and want feedback. So Bruce spoke about the three pillars, an insurance approach, choice of control, community and mainstream. Um, I spent the whole of my life in a system which is about rationing resources. Okay? And it's interesting when you take that hat off and say, well, there's gonna be enough money for everybody, it's not about rationing and waiting lists. The question is, what is the best lifetime investment with this person to build the best possible life and to build their social and economic participation. Now, when you strip away all the program boundaries, I hate to say it, but a lot of people don't know what to do <laughs> because we've never confronted that opportunity. So, um, and we're going to actually measure everything. Every person, all the money, the support, the outcomes, uh, link that to other data systems. So this is you know, quite challenging. Um, it's about values and commitment, but also about performance and measurement and what are we actually achieving. And with choice and control, I just do want to just reinforce that the money from the system is coming in to the scheme and going out via people out to the sector. So this is a very, very big change in power, enormous change, so um, that we shouldn't uh, underestimate. Um, so also just want to mention, um, Bruce spoke about the trial sites. We've got um, um, seven trial sites and an early start in New South Wales. Look, what, what we've done is different age groups, uh, different geographical areas, different um, sort of uh, issues. We've tried to learn about the best way of doing this. We've tried a lot of different things, and the data and the feedbacks come back in, and we're changing things. Okay? So this is the way I think it's going to be, because there is no one single answer. So this is about trial and learning and using data to make good decisions. Now, under the legislation, every person, um, they become a participant in the scheme and will have an individual plan. And so the plan comprises of their goals and aspirations, um, informal mainstream and community support, and NDIS reasonable and necessary funded support. Now, so we've sort of gotten the money bit sort of a bit better, but really, for me, we've still got these issues around social isolation, stigma and discrimination and barriers in the community. So we've got the, the money bit we're going to start working on, but the real hard work is still in that middle space around people, relationships, networks, their connections, and also structural barriers in the community. So the national rollout, um, 
be starting from July 2016. Um, so all states and territories except Western Australia have signed up and it's still under negotiation. Uh, New South Wales and um, Victoria have now completed their agreements to roll out to full scheme. So we've got 250,000 people of the 460,000. We have a timetable for how that's going to happen. Um, the, the numbers Bruce did mention, we're going to go from 31,000 to 460,000 people in the scheme over the next three and a half years. That's huge. But can I just say to you, there's this big tension between people that are desperate to get support, who want it tomorrow, and other people that want to take a much longer period of time. I think uh, democracy is about consensus, about how we can do this in the most sensible way to get support to people that most need it, and also build a scheme that's going to be really solid and sustainable. So some of the key challenges and opportunities, um, I'm thinking, I think we're thinking about like a 10 year time frame, trials, uh, transition, development, and then a mature scheme. This is not five minutes work. People have not thought about some of these issues about, um, um, you know, the best life possible in the community, different ways of supporting people. So there are many, many challenges here. Um, we've, um, We've still got a national policy process, so parts of the scheme are still being finalised. So through the Disability Reform Council and the Disability Policy Group, we've got work around uh, market and workforce. So it's a major piece of work around that. Safeguards and quality. We're currently using the safeguards and quality system of each state and territory, but we're working towards a national scheme. There's work around uh, link information linkages and capacity building, which is for people who, will, who won't um, um, qualify for an individual plan but require lighter touch level of community support in the, in the community and we've got issues around housing. If we get the support bit right, it's about how we get the uh, housing bit right. The way it's playing out is governments are doing the deal basically about the money, the people, the timeline and then the scheme does a transition plan with each state and territory, sits down in a very sensible way and negotiates the current system, the timetable and the transfer of responsibilities. Uh, we've got um, issues about supply side. We've got a lot of issues here about once the money starts coming in to better meet people's needs, we've got a supply issue and also the right type of supports to meet people's goals and dreams, the life that they want. Uh, and the, the, because the scheme won't be funding the agencies directly, we're actually funding through people. There's a whole issue about how the agency works with the market, so to speak, as a steward to deal with issues of short supply and price and all those sorts of things. But a couple of other really challenging bits are, we've actually got to design a delivery model for the scheme nationally within our 7% um, benchmark. So we've got to actually cost not just the people and their support, but actually running a scheme, so, which is an amazing exercise about how you would build a scheme, cost it, measure it. Um, so this has been blowing my mind in terms of the level of sophistication, but it, it's, it's a very disciplined task. We've got the work around the, um, the scheme actuaries and the data. This is going to be amazing. Each person comes into the scheme with their personal data, their support data, their funding data, their outcomes data. We can link that to health, education, employment and other big data sets. So I think this is going to be pretty amazing. Uh, we've also got, got you know, perhaps the biggest challenge, which is about development of capacity. Uh, for people to you know, build and pursue their goals and dreams for a good life, for families and other people to get alongside people for the sector, start thinking about supporting people in different ways, and for the staff of the agency, for us to find and recruit people with the values and the skills to, to take this forward. I've also been thinking um, just um, this morning really about um, the huge work to, to, to build the alliance and the community confidence to get this far. We're only starting. And uh, what I do know from my other work around trying to sustain values-based initiatives over a long period of time is we need a lot of work to sustain the alliances and the vision. And so, so the agency has got a very strong co-design framework around bringing in people with disabilities and their families and the sector and community as much as possible within the timelines to co-design the work as we move forward. Uh, just going to give you three examples of unique opportunity. The first one is, and this really excites me, um, 60,000 people with a psychosocial disability uh, will be included in the scheme. Um, we, we're going to double the amount of funding for that group of people and um, having just worked in the mental health sector, I've got to say to you, there's all this lovely work around recovery and beautiful policy documents. I could not find one policy document in Australia that spoke about people having choice and control in a mental health context. 
Okay, and, and I, I was just stunned by this. Okay, so I'm on a bit of a person, personal mission here. We've got, uh, in every state and system, we've got uh, large numbers of people with long-term disabilities related to the mental health conditions who haven't been cured despite all the treatment, okay, and, um, and they live in a separate world. And we've got a whole bunch of people with uh, other disabilities that have got mental health problems that also live in a separate world to the health system. So I think our movement can bring people with mental health related uh, conditions into our citizenship movement and we can do something amazing for the benefit of everybody. Um, um, so we've already got about 1,200 people into the scheme with uh, a psychosocial disability and starting to see some really fantastic outcomes. Secondly, um, in terms of the staffing of the scheme, uh, the major staff categories are locally coordinators and planners. We're trying to build a broad base for planning so people have got multiple pathways, independent planning, peer supported planning, uh, sports through locally coordination and also specialist planners. So, and uh, a cornerstone of the scheme is going to be our work through local area coordination, which is a particularly Australian strategy, which has got a long-term evidence base around supporting people in a personal way, connected to their local community, uh, where they can access direct funding and um, build and pursue the life they want. And so really the key design principles there are, if we're going to build a scheme about how do you get to know people, how do you get connected to the local community, how do we build on these positive assumptions about ordinary people doing amazing things, okay? And how do we think about the system being more about facilitation and not providing everything, and about the system starting with the right question, which is a good life for people, which is about relationships and security and uh, choice and control, and people making a contribution and having challenging, interesting things to do. So they're the sort of the basics we're trying to build up. And um, between 50 and 60% of people across the country will have access to a, uni a universal local area coordination strategy in most local communities across the country, which I think will be an amazing thing. And the last thing really is, um, I've had a few conversations about, people are a bit scared about this insurance approach because you, you equate insurance to cost cutting and all that sort of stuff, but in the context that we've got, we've got an amazing opportunity to, um, to be serious about asking the right questions about a good life for people and to get hard-nosed about social and economic participation and to start measuring things and to make sure that what we're actually, we say we're doing, that we're actually achieving uh, the outcomes that people want and we're lifting people's participation in the community. So I actually think that's a pretty big challenge because I think we're used to talking about values and commitment and all that. We need all that and we actually need a performance culture which talks about um, clarity about what we're working to do and about measurement of outcomes and are we really hitting those big issues around relationships and connection and also people's economic participation in the community. So the NDIS is not perfect by a long way but I reckon it's a really good start and we've got a long way to go. So what I like about it is it's a very open system. Uh, as the data comes in, people we change things. And we want that to continue to be the way. So we're very, very keen. I know talking to Bruce yesterday, we're very keen to be part of these big international networks. We want feedback. We want people to come and look and give us feedback and give us ideas. And um, that way we can build those into the future of the scheme. Thank you very much.